Vada Fly gonna recap this and say Gotti caught a 30 on the dime bro. So all y'all wanna know what happened, I'm gonna tell you what happened. He got smoked. That one was crazy, y'all the game. Sometimes Peter, nobody that knows body. Hit his area with 51. Everything in the Vada Fly. Where is the Yep, yep, you already know what it do and what it does, so you ain't gotta ask what it was. Salute to the subscribers. That notification, gangrightsgangclothing.com. For the merchandise, you heard me right. Salute to every single one of y'all. I know y'all, what kind of shirt he got on if we haven't speak. I know y'all see the parakeets. Y'all always be like, oh, you always wear hoodies. You always wear hoodies. But when I wear something different, it's going to be somebody in the comments talking. Oh, this, that, third. And we never see what you got on. But anyway, let's keep it moving. So, got a couple things I want to talk about. This might be a little longer one today. Um, right, right, right. Take this walk with me. Like, like y'all wanted me to talk. So, take this walk with me. I'll talk to y'all about the Lakers and like that towards the end. Um, let's get into the battle rap, battle rapping. That's what we're here for. Um, yesterday, you saw the whole murder mook, Sue Surf, uh, placing bets, $10,000 bet on Rock, $10,000 bet on himself, first Rex, and things like that. Him telling Rex to go sit in the corner, kind of like how your pops would do. I don't want to hear nothing from you. Go sit down right now. Um, we all know that Sue Surf battled Rex before uh, Rex beat him, but you know, Rex, Surf don't really show up on other leagues. Shit, he be, he be, <laughs> he be sometimes be on Ultimate Rap League. So you know damn well he ain't showing up for nobody else. That's the thing that I always say when it comes, and he's admitted this himself when it comes to other leagues that you know you're, you're paying me to go battle on the op side like i'm not like rare breed and all types of leagues like that it's never worth paying a suit surf to come over there because you're not going to get um his a game here and he's letting you know that all from top you know what i mean so if somebody lets you know if a motherfucker lets you know what they doing and you and you go ahead and pay him then when you get a bad product you know that's your personal business we don't want to hear about it um so i, I think that that them them battling, if Rex and Surf was to battle, there's so many variables that come into my mind as far as uh, the backstory. Like, you got Rex, who was a legacy guy. He was around from the beginning. But this is a what have you done for me lately world. Y'all seen when I did the blog yesterday, it really took me a second to try to draw from a last Rex performance that I was really wowed by. And it might have been the verb one. And for you to be one of the guys that is a legacy guy i'm talking about there's only there's about about 10 to 15 guys that are like from the beginning i remember you from when battle rap like first first started type shit putting it down to go where y'all have gone it, it is what it is and that's the reason why when fans hear your names they don't really place it in high regards um reed is a legacy guy but you've seen what reed has done in his return to battle rap well consistent return he's been in and out the last couple years he battled against chess you know he battled against um john john first it's in the car i know y'all remember that he battled against uh chess he showed flashes in the chess battle uh and then he had more battles from then you know what i'm saying he battled shine he lost he battled rex he won uh and then he doubled back to this circuit and now he battled surf you know that was a better battle for him and now he battled Ninny. now Here's the thing about the nitty battle. If it's a punchline contest, as I've said in different blogs before, you're gonna pick Rum Nitty if it's a punchline contest because Rum Nitty Punch is better than fucking damn near everybody, right? And I got some things to talk about Be Magic, but I'm gonna say them later in this blog. Uh, so if it's a punchline contest, you're gonna pick Rum Nitty. And you might wanna watch this. Like I got like a good 20, 30 minutes, so I got some time to talk. I usually only have like 10, 15 minutes and you know, I get to the subject and get out of it. But you know, it's gonna be all the subjects that I have to talk about because the King of the Dot joined us later. So I'm gonna watch that. But for now, I'm just, you know, we're, we're scrambling and rambling, but it's not really a ramble because I have consistent thoughts of what I'm saying. So you have a Reed versus a Rum Nitty, right? In a rap battle, battle rap, who has, who's the, doing the battle, battle rapping that night? 
to me, Reed did it. Reed did two rounds of battle rapping that were better than what Rum Nitty did. And I love Rum Nitty. I love what Rum Nitty does. I like how Rum Nitty brings it. But as far as what battle rap is concerned, I'm not biased. Rum Nitty is one of my favorite battle rappers. Tay Rock is one of my favorite battle rappers. But y'all know, y'all been around long enough to know that if I felt like somebody won, I'm gonna say they won. I felt like somebody lost, I'm gonna say they lost. That may cost me an interview. I don't really do many interviews anyway. That may cost me whatever, but I don't care. I'd rather keep it a thou wow than to sit up here and say, I feel like somebody won when I know they didn't. That's just me though. It's my personal opinion on my little small teeny YouTube channel. So, um, I feel like read, read, read with the consistency. And that's the one thing with the legacy guys, if they were more consistent, they would have to learn how to ball on this in this time frame, without the crowds, without the big stages. You know, if you keep coming back around and we keep seeing you, then we're gonna realize, okay, if they could do it on this stage. Now you got a guy like Reed. Reed is sought after. After what he did versus Surf and after what he did versus Nitty, a lot of people want to battle Reed. A lot of people, rookies, veterans, all that shit. They're like, yo. I want that Reed smoke because you know Reed is going to bring you a consistent battle. He might not be the best punchline in the world. And then Reed, you know, he even mentioned it himself. Why people always want to come up with an excuse when I win. Like when I win, why do people always have to have an excuse as to, oh, this person didn't bring his best. This person wasn't 100%. We need to cut all that shit out. Like we need, we definitely, as fans, we need to cut that shit out and just let it be what it is. If he wins, give him his win. Now, back to Surf, Rock, Mook. Rex, et cetera, et cetera. Don't let that get too far ahead of you. Um, a lot of people peeped that blog yesterday. Uh, it did a lot of views and a lot of people had their reactions and I've seen people in, um, you know, people's commenting and saying that they think a fully prepared Rex beats a fully prepared Sue Surf. I could believe that, but what does a fully prepared Rex look like nowadays? Y'all can't move the goalpost and say that Surf is the only person that doesn't come prepared. What does a fully prepared Rex look like? You know what I'm saying? What is the last three round Rex that had you like, oh shit, like he's a he's a killer. He's a killer McGilla again. Because well, you can say what you want. Sue Surf came with three rounds versus um Reed Dollars. Sue Surf came with three rounds versus Gigi Gotti. I'm just saying. We're not moving are we moving the goalpost today or are we keeping a thousand? Okay? So I can remember more so for one than I can for the other. And to be honest with you, I don't know what Rex performance is beating his Geechee Gotti performance or is beating his Reed Dollars performance. They both battle Reed. One got washed, one, one debatably won. I'm just saying, if we're gonna look at the analytics and we're gonna call this thing down the middle, we have to keep it a thousand. We can't use personal preference. We can't use bias. We can't use, I don't like surf, so I'm gonna just pick the other person. It doesn't work like that. Um. And especially with money on the line. Money money makes it different because now that loss is a bigger embarrassment. Like you lost 10,000. You lost 10,000 on a bet? Um, so that, that's a different story. And I know The Rock and Mook. Rock and Mook is going to be different anyway. Them niggas really don't like each other. Like they really do not like each other. I promise you. Rock told me himself that this is going to be different. Like you think that what he did versus Daylight was something... It's going to be different versus Mook because they really, really don't like each other. I mean, although both were dot mob at one time, they never really had a lot of admiration for each other anyway. And as times went on, you could see when a lot of the shit was going on with Rock and the allegations and people and the stories and shit that was going on. You could see Mook in the comments, like commenting, laughing, crying, like egging the shit on. So I'm telling you it definitely is going to hit a head, a boiling point in their battle. I don't think it's gonna go somewhere it doesn't need to go, but them niggas don't like each other at all, at all. And then with the whole Briz situation, you know what I'm saying? Like that only made things worse. And I think that when, when Briz does speak about his situation, I haven't spoke to him, but like I said in the joint yesterday, I heard this is what I heard, and this one made the most logical sense to me as to why he didn't battle Mook. I heard he didn't want to do it because he wanted to push it back, and I heard that they kept pushing anyway, like, nah, we got this bread involved, it's happening on this date, whether you want it to happen or not. So you could take that for face value, 
my the source that I hear from is pretty fucking reliable, and that's the closest thing to making sense. I heard he was with it. I heard he wanted to do the battle. I heard he was all for it. But I heard that the time from when his man's Zaid, rest in peace Zaid, had passed away to the actual battle was too close. And he wanted to push it back for one event. And, you know, this obligation, this contract, this money sent out. It was like, no, nah, we still rolling with it. And then the trailer came out and then he was like, yo, he felt betrayed because he wanted to push it back. And um, they said no. So that's, that's the latest or greatest I've heard on that. Uh, moving on to B Magic. So B Magic put out a tweet yesterday and basically was like showing his resume, who he's battled against. Uh, B Magic has one of the greatest battle rap resumes ever. He's battled so many people in his time, the ill wills, the daylights, conceited. Not too many people could even say they got conceited on their resume. Charlie Clip, like he got so many people on his resume. You know what I'm saying? St. Louis Truist, you know how we be moving adults. We moved through you and your unit to yours to keep the beef fresh. I brought something aluminum for you. But see, I love what B Magic does, and he was he's he's basically calling for bigger names and bigger matchups. They don't call B Magic for nothing but subsidiary talent now. And I'm not saying subsidiary as in not good, but they use him as like a stepping stone for people now. He battled uh Geechee Gotti. That wasn't really a stepping stone battle. But that was like, B, uh, what is it? EFB versus EFB type shit. Just a check. He battled Jerry West. That's like a stepping stone for Jerry West. He just battled against Coffee Brown. URL brought a dude to battle a female. That shows you where they caught, where they stand with you. You know what I'm saying? Um, although I like B-Magic, and I feel like, I mean, he beat Chess in that battle. You know what I'm saying? That was just a battle that, and his, his win versus Chess, nobody even really cared about, which was so crazy. He didn't really get no admiration for it, but... Here's the thing with B-Magic. One of the greatest flows in battle rap ever. You know what I'm saying? Like, he has one of the best flows ever. Him versus Tay Rock, legendary. Let Fire-ass battle, him versus Tay Rock. I went back and watched that shit not too long ago. Um, it's just the inconsistencies. Like, the chokes, the stumbles. And I know he's saying that, you know, he said something like the fans are stuck in 2018 or whatever the case may be. No, you battled uh, B-Magic not too... I mean, you battled uh, Jerry West not too long ago. You battled against T-Top on the quarantine. You battled on the Geechee Gotti. Like, you battled mad people. And in all of those battles where they were trying to get you some steam, you were losing all of them shits. Like, you were getting crushed in those battles. And now, it's come to the point where the fans, when they have the impression of you, and when they have the impression and they're set in how they feel, it takes a lot to get from under that. And when you have the battles, like, it's like, Nigga, you gotta do more. Like you gotta kill something, and they're not gonna invest a lot of money in no big name opponents for a B Magic because it's like, I'm sure these are the same conversations that you have on the phone. Like even before you make these tweets, I'm sure this is the same conversations that they have with you. Yo, are we gonna put you in front of a ten thousand dollar opponent or a fifteen thousand dollar opponent? Why are they gonna do that? Because it's a business at the end of the day. Yes, caffeine is the one behind the budget, but the shit gotta make sense at the same time. I like what B-Magic does. Trust me, I do. I love what he's able to do when he's in his bag and when he's in his mode and when he's focused. I love it. But then at the same time, I have to take into consideration the, the battles where I'm like scratching my head like, damn, B-Magic died again. B-Magic died again. So if you're going to do it or if this is what you want, you got to kill shit, man. And you just saw you just saw MCs revitalize their career. It's a couple of MCs who careers are revitable. You can revitalize that shit, but you got to step it up. And you got to be consistent in all your fucking battles. You can't just have one good battle and then not show up the next one or be stumbling and shit. Like, come on, dog. Come on, dog. So we're gonna see where you go with that, and I hope that uh, I hope that it, that it works out for you. But you're gonna definitely have to. Uh, you're gonna definitely have to step it up a little bit. I seen Daylight yesterday trolling, talking about battling Hitman and shit for 30 grand. But then in the same blog, Daylight's like, I don't wanna battle Hitman. I just wanna talk to get my views up and shit. That's what a lot of this shit be about a lot of the time. Where like when it comes to Daylight, salute to him. He's making a lot of bread. His sneakers are selling. Uh, he has the best three round performance of 2020. Uh, tell me if somebody does better. I think the closest. MCs to have a performance on the level that Daylight had in 2020. 
maybe some Chilla Jones, maybe some B dots. But I think three rounds consistently, Daylight's performance versus Rock is probably going to be the best performance of 2020. So he's standing on that, and I and I respect it. Uh, he was talking to me the other day about a battle that he might be having in December. I don't want to say versus who and shit, but who knows? Hopefully, was it October? No, it wasn't October. It was December. Uh, we'll see where that goes. Um, but salute to him and everything he's got going on. Uh, last but not least, Los Angeles Lakers. Salute to all the Lakers fans out there. A lot of people been telling me to give them more. They want me to talk about certain sports and shit in these blogs. So I do it like towards the end. Uh, the Lakers played against Denver last night. And uh, to be honest with you, uh, Denver was a team that overachieved in some in some regards. But they got, they got a lot of good talent. And they have a really good core of players that's going to be returning. Uh, I think they can get from under that Millsap deal. Paul Millsap signed a three-year, $90 million deal. He's making $30 million a year. That's crazy. I don't think Paul Millsap is worth $90 million or $30 million a year, especially when he's... Jamal Murray's the first option. Jokic is the second option. Jeremy Grant outplayed him this series. Michael Porter Jr., probably out yeah michael porter jr definitely outplayed him in the playoffs uh he's got about four or five players that are outplaying him on the nuggets roster right now you that type of money 30 million a year that'd be the highest paid player on the team you can't be the fourth or fifth best best player on your team when you're making that kind of money um it just doesn't work like that now i know a lot of people get put in circumstances where they make money that's worth more than what their contract value is but Denver's got a young core. They can win the same amount of games next year without Paul Millsap on, in the lineup. I'm sorry. That's just from the offset from what I've seen. I don't think Paul Pier I don't think Paul Millsap was the reason they really won any of those games down the stretch. It was all Jamal Murray and Jokic. Um so moving on. Uh they 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 overachieved. They opened up some eyes. Uh Denver did their thing. I don't never met a have you ever met a Denver Nuggets fan? Like a legitimate Denver Nuggets fan? I've never met one. If there is one, jump in these comments and let me know. Um, the Lakers are going to win the championship this year. It doesn't matter against Miami. It doesn't matter against Boston. Like these guys are just might as well just go ahead and um, they might as well just go ahead and get this one out of the way. Because honestly, uh, with LeBron, the way he closed last night, nobody's beating them. It ain't, it ain't happening. When your second best player is Anthony Davis, one of the top five players in the NBA, arguably top three he's really arguably like one of the top three players in the NBA when one of your top <laughs> when your second option is the top three NBA player you got a lot on your hands and a lot of people are not going to be able to deal with it uh, Miami doesn't really have the size to deal with LeBron and AD Jimmy Butler can do his thing Bam Adebayo is a good player but Bam can't get with AD hell no and Boston, definitely. I, I like Tice. I like the, the the heart in him and things like that and what he's able to try to do. But that shit ain't working against AD. I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. Uh, and Boston has nobody that's going to be able to slow down LeBron. LeBron's going to score 40 a night on them. If, he, if they even get there. I think Miami should get in tune and get this game tonight. And when it comes to Tyler Hero, good player. But you just saw that you could shut the lights off on him. Uh... What's his name? Just showed you that when he scored 37 in one game, but when you're fully prepared, you can shut the lights off on him pretty quick. Uh, Boston did it the other night. When they wanted to shut the lights out, they were like, yo, you can hone in on him. He had about 14, 15. So he's a good scorer, but he's not He's not a 30 a night guy. And Jimmy Butler, I don't know what happened with him the other night. Jimmy Butler was on some other shit. But regardless of which one of them makes it to the finals, they're going home in five. But um, you guys stay safe out there. I'll watch the King of the Dot joint later. And we're going to wrap. Gang.